Hi, I'm Chuck, and today for the service centers, I really want to focus on some high-level aspects of service, repair, and troubleshooting for this next generation of Mala AC card. So while we're out doing repairs for customers, another nice thing that we can do for the customer, and something we really should do, is check the condition of the vacuum pump oil. Now on this screen, this, these particular units have up to a thousand life, thousand hours of life on the vacuum pump oil. And every 60 hours they check the condition of the oil. So it's great to run this while you're there just to make sure that that vacuum pump oil is still in good condition for, at the customer location. Here you just disconnect any of the HP or the LP lines from any of the systems and start. That vacuum pump will run. This process usually takes between 30 seconds and one minute just to do the check. And if the condition of the oil is, in fact, needs to be regenerated because it's uh, contaminated, then this will continue into the next step of the process, which can run up to an hour to recondition that vacuum pump oil. After completing all the repairs, and if there's a filter that's replaced, for example, if that's the only repair, you'll also want to run the system leak test. What this does is it'll pull a vacuum on the internal unit and look for any leaks that may have been introduced during the service. To run it in the maintenance menu, just hit the start button. It'll tell you to disconnect any of the hoses from the system. Uh, I've disconnected those, so I'm just going to continue with the process. This check lasts three minutes and 30 seconds, and at the end you'll get a, either a positive result or it'll tell you if there's a leak that you've introduced a leak into the system. Now let's talk about pressure calibration. One of the ways to know if the sensors are out of calibration, what we see on our side is that the, during the vacuum process, during a process, the, you will get on the screen a vacuum leak error. Uh, if you see that, a lot of times it just means that the pressure calibration, the pressure transducers need to be recalibrated. So let's go through the pressure calibration function. In the maintenance menu, you'll find full pressure calibration. Now this calibration procedure calibrates all the pressure transducers on the unit. And for each unit, the mid-range and the low-end unit have two pressure calibration uh, sensors to calibrate, and then the high-end units, like a 2180 or a 2280, uh, those would require, uh, that those actually have a third pressure sensor on them and also gets calibrated. To start this, hit start. Now this requires a pre reference pressure gauge but in a pinch in the field, you can also use the LP uh, gauge on the front of the unit and get close enough to be able to solve any kind of uh, pressure uh, calibration errors that you might experience out there with the customer. So to start this, we'll hit enter here. Uh, disconnect the hoses from any of the systems. These are disconnected, so I'll start the process by pressing going, going here. Uh, emptying hoses starts first, and then it'll continue the next step of the process. The basic fundamental aspect of this process is to follow the instructions on the screen and enter the values when, when they're needed. At this point in the process, it's asking us to take the adapter from the accessories kit that comes with the unit and plug it into the coupler for the LP side without screwing it in. And that's what we'll do here. So here's the adapter and here's the low side pressure uh, coupler. We'll attach it like this. After that, in the next step, it's going to ask us to open this now and let, that, let ambient air enter into the LP hose. This gives us a zero. And we'll continue. Now in the process, it asks us to connect a reference pressure gauge to the HP and open the coupler and also close the LP coupler and disconnect this bottle fitting adapter that we've plugged in. That's an important step so that you don't end up with refrigerant spraying out of the connector. Now that we've gone through that, it's going to ask us to put in the reference pressure gauge reading in bar for the HP connection that we made earlier. In this case, I'm going to use the LP gauge on the front of the unit as a reference, as opposed to the reference gauge, as I don't have a reference gauge with me. So this is a great way to be able to do the pressure calibration 
without necessarily having a reference pressure gauge in case you didn't have it in the kit. So the pressure reading down here, the inside here is in bar. That looks to me like about 5.9 bar. So that's what we'll enter in here into the screen as a reference pressure. And hit check. The calibration is now done. This ends the process here and it returns you to the main menu. At this point we've calibrated all the pressure transducers in the unit and it should eliminate any kind of errors that you see during the vacuum check process or otherwise. So while at the customer location repairing units, we also want to check the calibration of the scales. Now there's a 386 gram vol that comes with the unit and that's used for this calibration process. And what we want to do is on a yearly basis actually do a full calibration, that's the recommendation. But as a, just a check, if uh, the unit is uh, relatively new, you just want to check to make sure that this, the scale is in the right calibration, this is the process you use. To start the process, hit the start button and it'll tell you to attach this ball weight under the front of the unit. And there's a little magnet under there that this hangs on and so I'll attach it right now. The magnet's attached to the scale itself. Now that I've attached it, I'll go ahead and start the process. This process takes about 15 seconds just to settle the scale out for any uh, kind of uh, undulations or anything like that um, so we can get a good reading on the scale to be able to sure, ensure that the calibration is accurate. In this case, the calibration is okay, so I'll go ahead and remove that uh, check ball and we'll go on to the next step. So to perform a yearly or just general uh, calibration of the internal scale, you want to go into the maintenance menu to the internal bottle scale calibration function here. Now this procedure is going to require a four kilogram reference weight, which is included in the service kit. And the part number is shown there. This weight will attach to the same lo weight location as the check ball that we attached in the previous step. So we'll say OK. We'll ask to clear any of the previous calibrations. We want to say yes. Remove any weights that are attached. There's nothing attached to the scale right now, so we're going to continue. And then it'll say, please wait. It's important not to jostle or move the machine during this please wait process. Now it's going to tell us to place the reference weight on the magnet under the unit, which we'll do now. Once we've attached the weight, we can continue. Again, it's important not to touch the machine while it's going through this please wait process. At the end of this, we'll either get a positive or a negative result. If it's not negative, it'll ask us if we want to correct the calibration. Now we'll remove the reference weight and continue. Here's our error. Result was negative. We have to correct the scale, so we'll update the calibration. The calibration at this point is done. In some cases, the expansion valve either would need to be replaced or adjusted. In order to do that, the adjustment, remove the plastic cover that's on the outside of the setting. Now the expansion valve is really used to get that refrigerant that's been recovered from the vehicle into a vapor phase. Um, therefore, when it, ends, when it enters into the heat exchanger and the oil separator, that that oil can be separated out from the refrigerant and then drained out as used oil. The setting for this is five spaces or four lines, and that's equivalent to 43 PSI, or in other words, uh, 34 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the setting that you'll want to use as a general setting to get started with this. For more information on how to set this and what the range limits are, please visit the MALA forum and there you can find more detailed information on the expansion valve and replacement. Here on the manifold, there are times where you need to replace a pressure transducer. For that, you're going to need a 19 millimeter wrench. I like to use the closed end part of the wrench when I'm uninstalling these and reinstalling them. I just get better range of movement and I don't have to worry about damaging 
the solenoids that are adjacent to this. Also of note, when you're replacing pressure transducers is that there's an O-ring seal that's associated with this above the threads. You want to make sure you don't damage that O-ring seal and it's firmly in place before you screw it down into the manifold block. Although these units offer stronger AC type solenoids, they do get clogged from time to time with debris or leak stop and they do need to be cleaned um, in the event that you have an error in service. And so in order to do that, you need a 14 millimeter wrench on the top here to take off the top main assembly. And after that, it'll expose the manifold. At that point, you'll need a 22 millimeter tube wrench that's included in the service kit to do the repair and to do the cleaning. So we'll take off this part here and I'll show you the manifold. Now that the assemblies are removed on the top, it exposes this manifold piece here, which then can be removed with that 22 millimeter deep socket. So with your 22 millimeter deep socket, you can remove this uh, exterior piece of the manifold here. Underneath there's an O-ring seal and there's a lower assembly with a spring. And you want to make sure that you don't lose any of these components or reverse any of the components. You also want to make sure you check any kind of washers and make sure the orientation of those crush washers are in the right orientation, the same orientation as you removed the unit. After it's cleaned, reassembly is basically the same process but just in reverse. So this concludes the troubleshooting overview, all the top issues. Hopefully this has been helpful in helping you to repair and look to know where to start to repair for these units. And for more information, visit the MALA forum. Um, there you'll find information like uh, operation manuals, service repair diagrams, uh, flow diagrams, and more.